subsystem codes. Okay. Thanks. Oh. Oops. So this is a uh, joint work with um, Andrew Doherty at the University of Sydney. And um, so these quantum double subsystem codes I'm going to be introducing today are essentially a generalization of the Bacon Shaw code uh, using the mathematical formalism of uh, the quantum double models introduced by uh, Kitaev. So to this end, we'll go over very briefly the Bacon Shaw code, and then we'll look at the quantum double model, starting with the simplest quantum double, the, the Z2 toric code. Uh, and then we'll move on to the non-abelian quantum double. So the Bacon Shaw code is of interest because it has, sorry, <coughs> it's been shown to have a high error threshold. Um, and the reason, yeah, and so the Bacon Shaw code is, is shown here. We, we place uh, qubits on the vertices of this 2 by 2 lattice, and the x stabilizer here uh, is a tensor product of, well, the x operators on these uh, uh, horizontal qubits in a line like this, and the z stabilizer is a tensor product of z operators vertically like this. Uh, we call these bacon strips for obvious reasons. So we ca the, the reason that this code has a high error threshold is because we can infer error syndromes indirectly using these two-body measurements of uh, gauge operators, um, all of which commute with the stabilizer operators um, on the page shown before. Um, by taking products of these gauge operators, we can obtain the syndrome associated with a stabilizer without measuring the stabilizer. This is good because these stabilizers are six-body operators. It would be uh, uh, prohibitively difficult to measure. So these uh, two-body operators uh, require simple circuits to measure. Um, and we can also parallelize measurement. So we can measure all of these uh, at the same time. There also exists a simple fault-tolerant gate set to measure these two-body operators, which is nice. And um, as a result of these gauge operators, error correction in Bacon Shaw takes a particularly simple form. If we have a Z error on the central qubit here, we land to commute with uh, this uh, uh, X Bacon strip here. But if we apply a second Z on the qubit shown here, what we have is a product of uh, an X stabilizer and a gauge operator. Um, now, this gauge operator comm commutes with the stabilizer here and so we've effectively corrected the error by turning it into a transformation on this gate uh, subsystem. So what this means is that we've divided the logical subsystem, the logical subspace, um, into a, a gauge subsystem, which we don't care about, into which we encode no useful informa information, and a logical subsystem here. Um, so we only need correct errors up to rotations on this gauge space. So now, can we generalize this Bacon Shaw code? Can we uh, come up with a code which keeps this property of this gauge subsystem? And whoa, sorry. And with it, the two-body error, uh, sorry, two-body gauge operators, and this uh, error correction procedure. So we want to consider generalizations of this code using the quantum double models. And the reason for this, as I'll show later, is that there's a nice connection between uh, the sta the st some stabilizers in the stabilizer group of the toric code and uh, the Bacon Shaw code. So the toric code is defined on a, a lattice embedded in a torus. What we do is we associate a qubit with each of these edges. Um, Z stabilizers we call plaquettes and are tensor products of Z operators around faces on the lattice here. And X stabilizers are tensor products of poorly X operators around the vertex. Um, and of course, pa uh, plaquettes and vertices commute. Since products of stabilizers are also stabilizers, we have a link between the toric code and the Bacon Shaw code. As it turns out, we can multiply adjacent plaquettes and vertices to create. Uh, a Z bacon strip acting only on horizontal edges, and if we do the same for these vertices like this, we get an X bacon strip acting on vertical edges. Um, the overlap overlapping edges cancel, um, and 
this produces bacon strips. If we do the same thing, what we get is two independent codes acting on either the horizontal or vertical edges only. We can then go on to decompose these bacon strips into gauge operators uh, in the usual way. These codes are completely independent um, because they act on disjoint edges. So a natural question to ask at this point is how far we can we push this? Can we generalize, come up with some sort of bacon chore code for the non-abelian models as well? So to this end, let's look at the non-abelian quantum double. This is a more complex and non-stabilizer generalization of the toric code. Here, we place Q dits, that is D-level systems as opposed to Q bits, uh, on edges. Um, but the states of these Q dits are labeled by elements of a non-abelian finite group. So we can think of these codes using a kind of electromagnetic al analogy in which our vertebrators become a kind of electric operator as shown here and our magnetic oper uh, uh, sorry, our plaquette operators become a kind of magnetic operator. These are labeled by elements of this uh, non-abelian group. These operators are not completely analogous to the plaquette and vertex operators I showed for the toric code in that they don't directly detect errors. This is because errors in this code uh, can be thought of as excitations known as enions, which are uh, certain particles found in two-dimensional condensed matter systems. So the error syndrome in these codes corresponds to the charge carried by uh, the enion. Um, in these models, it's possible to have uh, enions with electric and magnetic charge, uh, which are not reducible to electric-only or magnetic-only excitations. These are known as dions. So in order to fully describe the model, we need operators on adjacent vertices and plaquettes. We call this a site. These operators generate what's known as the quantum double algebra, which this is just some linear combination of these DHG operators. Um, so these, the charge associated with these enions actually corresponds to the irreducible representations of this uh, quantum double algebra. And these irreducible representations of the quantum double algebra are labeled by a representation of a particular normal subgroup of this finite uh, cyclic group and a conjugacy class of the same. And these correspond to and correspond to uh, electric, uh, the, the representations of correspond to electric charge and the conjugacy class, magnetic charge. So it's possible to write down operators which project onto these charges respectively. Uh, we can also write down uh, operators which project onto dionic, that is electric and ma magnetic charge. These are more similar to stabilizers in that they allow us to detect uh, errors in charge. So we have a problem. It's not possible to simply multiply together uh, <coughs> plaquette and vertex operators. This code has more structure. Um, and in fact, errors are no longer labeled by group elements. They're labeled by uh, uh, irreps of the quantum double. So we need to do something else. A bacon strip, such as this here, is a loop around the torus, a non-contractible loop around the torus. We need some method of creating operators such as this. What we need to do are ribbon operators, which are responsible for the transport of anions around the lattice. These come in two flavors, dual ribbons and direct ribbons. Dual ribbons on the right here um, are formed from this operator here, which is a sort of uh, left group multiplication operator. And uh, direct ribbons in red are a sort of group projection operator. Since dual ribbons uh, tr uh, connect sites with the same uh, vertex with different plaquettes, they're responsible for transporting magnetic charge around the lattice. And similarly, uh, but opposite, direct ribbons transport electric charge since they con uh, connect sites consisting of the same plaquette but different vertices. So using these operators, it's possible to construct a kind of analog and a kind of non-abelian analog of these bacon strips using a particular operation in the algebra associated with ribbon operators, a kind of concatenation operation. 
these operators are not simply products of the vertices and plaquettes. Um, they're they're uh, independent of them. Um, note the similarity here to the, the operators that we got before by multiplying the plaquettes and vertices of the uh, Torah code. So we want to construct operators to detect charge uh, within this code. So what we're really interested then is in projectors onto dions. But to protect, uh, project onto electric and magnetic charge, uh, we need operators which consist of both uh, uh, red and blue, uh, electric and magnetic charge. Um, so what we can do is we can combine these to get these kinds of operators, these combined direct dual ribbons. There's a sort of link between sites in the regular quantum double and these operators. Um, insofar as we can you generate their own quantum double algebra. Um, this operator does not affect charge along the strip because it commutes with the plaquettes and vertices. Um, note that this is a combination of the Bacon strips from the horizontal and vertical codes I showed earlier uh, that we could get by multiplying plaquettes and vertices. This means that we've now got one two cubic code. Um, so now we want to consider uh, projective versions of these. So um, we get something that looks like this, something ugly. And unlike, uh, uh, as was the case, um, we can't simply split this up into gauge terms as we did for the toric code case. It just doesn't work. We've got too many things in there. And indeed, we wouldn't want to because this, uh, it doesn't make sense. The structure of the code is different. Um, these ribbon operators actually new quantum double code. Um, oh, um, uh, one guy. Uh, yeah. And um, so w what, they, what this code does is it defines an excitation space, which is a subset of that of the original quantum double model. And the, um, the, the difference between the two constitutes the gauge subspace of our model. Um, uh, so we can define operators on this gauge subspace as those which commute with the uh, projectile. These are effectively ribbon operators which create charge within the area of the projectors uh, whose total charge sums to zero. And we can write down two body operators uh, uh, which act on this gauge subspace. Um, and uh, And yeah, so um, it's possible to come up with a, a three-dimensional version of this code as well uh, by writing down um, a three-dimensional non-abelian toric code. Uh, yeah, thanks. All right, so questions? Have you worked out any like explicit examples in a not abelian group like S3 to see what you actually get if you were to use your construction, the quantum double construction on a not abelian group? Um, Using its irreducible representations and oh, uh, Yeah, I've tried it classes. with uh, S3, it's, yeah. Oh, I'm not sure what you're. Is it, is it interesting? Is there is something you can say, like, you know, there are various quantum technologies that can realize Q trits or Q dits yeah. generally, and they might be able to realize this more readily than a qubit type implementation, perhaps. I don't know. So I was just wondering if there's any nice geometric structure to these uh, uh, non-abelian groups. Uh, you might be able to get certain encoded gates. Uh, you know, you have a larger repertoire of gates when you use a non-abelian group, uh, for example, just by doing any on braiding. So I just was wondering if you had any examples that you'd work through at all. Uh, not on hand, no. Okay, other questions? All right, let's thank the speaker and
all the previous speakers of today.